we're now ready, ready to validate the design changes by running an analysis. To do this, we in place activate into the part and save the changes we have applied to the front frame. First, we might want to turn off the background components of the assembly so we can focus in on our design task and then of course click on the save to make uh, save any changes that we've made thus far. UGS Velocity Series is modular yet integrated so we can use either FEMAP Express simple finite element analysis built directly into Solid Edge or the full-blown FEMAP product to run a more thorough analysis on the front frame. Solid Edge and FEMAP are connected using UGS's PLM XML component technology. PLM XML allows the rich content sharing and interoperability between different applications, in this case the geometry and material data for the front bracket. The free FEMAP model shown here is an analysis of the front frame where the rear mount holes have pinned constraints and there is a, new, a 100 Newton side load where the left beater is mounted. The update to the revised front bracket model maintains the applied boundary conditions and automatically deletes the mesh since the geometry has been updated. You can see the old analysis results overlaid on the new geometry. We've gone ahead and deleted the old results at this point. Now to remesh the model I can select the geometry and instruct FEMAP to mesh the front bracket with TET elements and use the same mesh size as the original model. As this meshes the model, it is important to point out that any time a change is made in a managed solid edge document, those changes can easily be reflected in either FEMAP or NXCAM environments with our seamless integration. Unlike other systems, the user doesn't have to worry about losing their data and you can see how easy it is to update the models. Once a model has finished meshing, we can start the analysis of the front bracket by using the NX NASTRAN solver. The analysis monitor that you see on the screen displays the progress of the analysis and you can optionally show detailed messages about the process, progress of this analysis. Here on the bottom window pane where it says messages, you can actually follow along as it in this case is reading in the mesh and the analysis, creating the output from this analysis and then we'll visually see that as it puts it on the screen for us. We'll go ahead and remove that dialog and once this analysis is complete we can display the von Mises stresses on the deformed shape. Now you can also control the scale of the deformed shape and you can display and control and save animations. You also might at this point once the analysis is complete is to rotate the view and make sure that your model has the integrity that, it's, that you're looking for. If we need to strengthen it in any way, we can go back to solid edge and add, add thickness or more rounds to strengthen it. Now, of course, the final step is to save our analysis, which captures the information we created for this project. We simply give it a name and save it out. And again, in the message dialog below, you can follow along as it saves this particular uh, information out. Now we may also want to save this analysis out as JT information for quick and easy collaboration with other users or throughout the supply chain. Simply give it a name and then select the uh, uh, options that you want to use. In this case we'll use the default options and then let FEMAP take care of the rest. Now once we've finished uh, saving this out as our uh, as a JT information. We can close the FEMAP interface which is going to take us back into the solid edge environment. And then we want to close the front frame and return to the top level assembly where we'll want to save all the changes that we made to our design. Now don't forget we made changes to the width of this frame which affected several other components. So let's go ahead and fit the view click on the save button and you'll see it go through the process of saving uh, the different documents. Now as we close the assembly the system automatically prompts the user to upload the changes to Team Center Express. Now typical functions such as check in, check out, and upload are seamless tasks between Solid Edge and Team Center 
making for an easy to use interface. Once we get back into TeamCenter Express, we can easily search on the front frame where we want to manage the output from the analysis we just created. Once we locate the item revision where this front frame resides, we also might want to include that JT information within that um, uh, item revision. Here we can simply drag and drop the JT from our local drive into a managed environment. Now notice that Team Center recognizes that we're dragging in a file and so it's going to display a list for us to select from of what type of file this actually is, whether it's a FEMAP file or in this case we'll simply select direct model and then simply follow the prompts, click on the finish button and notice how it puts the JT information into that item revision. At that point we can click on the front frame JT and with the viewer tab activated on the right side we'll see our results also in Team Center. And of course we can rotate and look at those results. Now the final operation is to update the cavity block for the mold of the lower part of the mixer. We simply need to open the cavity block by double clicking on it and allow Solid Edge to update the design to reflect the changes that we've made. So here comes the cavity block up in Solid Edge. And then Solid Edge is going to prompt the user to allow the update and spread distance between the holes will increase from 32 to 36. So the changes have been updated. So at that point we'll go ahead and save this file. And then let's go ahead and close and check this information back in so it's available for any downstream processes. So it's important to update the cavity as it is, part, it is the part that is used to machine the mold for the bottom of the mixer. Now when the design changes are complete, the designer can navigate back to the task to perform where he began this process. We can make the necessary sign-offs and send the process on to manufacturing. What we want to do now is simply go ahead and click on the approve and then type in a message that we have completed the design change and send it on to the next step in the process which is the manufacturing person. Finishing up typing the message in ready for manufacturing, click on the OK button and that process is sent on to uh, the final uh, part of the process.